Hey, honey. Yes, Barry? Let's get out of here. Where are we going? Where do we always go? Hasta encontra la playa Por eso grito al mundo Yo soy de Puerto Vallarta Samba de Puerto Vallarta Noche de arrullo en el mar Samba de Puerto Vallarta Hello fellow travelers and welcome to this episode of the Work of Art to Travel Show. I'm your host, Mary Kessler, and I'm just so happy to be introducing you to my favorite vacation destination. Hey, maybe it's even yours, and that's Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. That music you're listening to is performed by Alberto Perez, and Alberto is the owner of the La Palapa Group of Restaurants. Those are the La Palapa, Puerto Vallarta's oldest restaurant on the famous Los Muertos Beach and the El Dorado Restaurant and Beach Club right next door. So you can enjoy that fantastic view of the Los Muertos Pier, all lit up in night in beautiful colors, or during the day in its grand splendor for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, seated with your toes in the sand right at the water's edge. It's so romantic. It's so Puerto Vallarta, my friends. This week we are celebrating food and fun and good times. That's right, we're going to go to Pipi's, the, the original Mexican restaurant in Puerto Vallarta. It's downtown, and uh, you're going to meet the lovely Paola Fregoso. She is the daughter of the owner of Pipi's, where, where they warn you, don't drink the water, drink the margaritas. But before we get to Paola and Pipi's, let's see what's happening this week in Puerto Vallarta, the 2nd of April, 2021. Things are hopping, according to friends on the ground in Puerto Vallarta. Bars are open, restaurants are open, nightclubs are all open as well as the Easter season is uh, descending upon us. Uh, No big celebrations, though, nothing like that because of the Rona. Uh, And, uh, of course, you know, North Americans are are coming. They're, They're tired of the long winter, the long lockdowns, especially, you know, travelers from the Golden State of California. They're flocking to Puerto Vallarta. Uh, Folks are feeling more secure and more confident about traveling after being vaccinated, as well as those who've already experienced the Rona. Uh, They're ready to get away. So uh, I I just looked over the costs of flights out of Los Angeles, actually, for the months of April and May. And right now you still can uh, fly Delta or Alaska for under $300 U.S. round trip. Uh, Now, you could do it bare bones for like two sixty five per person round trip, but that's really great news for Californians. Uh, but perhaps I have some good news for our brethren in the lockdown country to the north up in Canada. Uh, we'll see uh, if they really mean it or not. Maybe they're just dangling a maple leaf. We'll find out. But here uh, is an article from Vallarta Today. It says Air Canada returns to Mexico. After suspending flights, the airline will return, starting with a flight from Toronto. Uh, It reads, after suspending flights to summer destinations in January at the request of the Canadian government, Air Canada announced yesterday on its current and upcoming routes website that it will resume flights from Toronto to Mexico beginning Monday, May the 3rd, with a weekly frequency. Summer schedule includes destinations to Mexico, suspended from January 31st to uh, April 30th at the government's request to Air Transat, uh, Air Canada, WestJet, and Sunwing Airlines because of the new COVID-19 variants. We talked about that. With uh, Canada's veto to all flights to Mexico, Mexico's tourism has consequences, especially for destinations such as Puerto Vallarta and Riviera Nayarit. Two of the destinations par excellence for Canadian tourism. Additionally, Air Canada will fly from Toronto to other international beach destinations starting May 9th and will have a weekly flight to Jamaica starting May the 5th. We have begun to ramp up our summer schedule as we normally do at this time of year. That includes resuming, uh, resuming services to certain destinations that are seasonal 
or that were suspended due to COVID-19, Air Canada reported. Flights from the company called the Maple Leaf are not the strongest during the summer. However, there are some that are maintained on weekends, according to trends in certain well-identified cities such as Toronto, Vancouver, Edmonton, Calgary, and Montreal. Mexico's tourism sector raised the alarm about the notable drop in tourism from Canada, resulting in lost economic revenue for the business sector, occurring for a prolonged period of time. Canadian tourism, after the United States, is one of the strongest sources of tourism revenue for thousands of service providers throughout the Bay. And I have a link to that Viarta Today article in the show notes. And uh, welcome back, Canada. Uh, We hope. Uh, We had been hearing some rumors lately that Daiquiri Dix is going to be closing. And uh, we were, that rumor was confirmed. Uh, We have a note here from the owners of Daiquiri Dix, and I'm going to read it to you. It says, to all of our friends, fans, and family of Daiquiri Dix, after 40 years, Terry and Peter Bowman are retiring from the restaurant business. What began as a spark of interest during a Puerto Vallarta holiday vacation in 1980 and 1981 led to an amazing adventure. Does that sound familiar, you guys? (laughs) Uh, We moved from the California Bay Area with two small children and no clue to running a tourist business with a foreign country or in a foreign country. As many foreigners know, we learned the hard way and grew to love our home. We survived the hard years and prospered the good ones. Uh, Now the time has come to pass the role to a new group. They have lots of experience and already love Vallarta. We are confident their adventure will be every bit as rewarding as ours. We hope that you have a chance to visit us for the last Asian chicken salad or Piscato Vallarta. We will be open our regular schedule through Thursday, April the 15th. Thank all of you for your patronage and years of support. Stay well. So that is sad news. We've seen a lot of changes in Puerto Vallarta, especially over the last 12 months. And I'm sure uh, we will see more. There, there are a couple more that I want to talk about. We'll talk about those next week, though. Uh, and uh, to those lovers of Daiquiri Dix, this is this is going to be some bad news. We'll see who is who is coming in to take their place, and we'll talk about that maybe next week as well. Uh, I remember Daiquiri Dix fondly uh, when my we went there when my youngest was just like three months old. And they babysat him and held him and watched after him while uh, Debbie and I had a nice, quiet dinner together. It was, uh, that's my my fond memory of Daiquiri Dix. Word from uh, JR, from our friend John Russell, is that he is changing his meet and greet location from uh, Kelly's Por Favor, which he's been... He's been doing those there for the last 10 years or so, and he is now moving over to Nacho Daddy. That's going to be the beginning of May. And so I have dibs on his meet and greet uh, this coming May 11th. I'm going to be crashing his meet and greet with my microphones. We're going to start at 630 and we'll go till 8 so that we can get out in time for a Puerto Vallarta sunset. I'm sure that you will agree that that's very important that we catch one of those. And uh, on May 11th, sunset is at around 8.30 on that Tuesday. So, and by the way, I'm going to be bringing you uh, the the meet and greet that we had up on the roof over at La Traviata uh, a couple months back. Um, I'll have that in a couple weeks, so stay tuned for that. And Michael and Becky... uh, Thanks for being at that meet and greet. I just mailed you some t-shirts, so I hope uh, I hope they fit and I hope they make it. And uh, Reggie, Reggie, uh, you and uh, Donna Marie, I just sent you some t-shirts too. So wear them, wear them when you are in Puerto Vallarta. Wear them proudly. <laughs> uh, hey, don't forget, by the way, if you are in town beginning uh, of May, make sure that you stop by. Really, I'm going to be there with the microphones, with JR. Uh, it will be Nacho Daddy, Tuesday, May 11th, from 6.30 until 8, like I said. 
that's Basilio Badillo 287 over in the Emiliano Zapata neighborhood of Puerto Vallarta. And uh, I understand that JR will be properly vaccinated and everything, and he will be there, of course. Uh, and, of course, every Tuesday after that, uh, JR will also be there, uh, beginning at 6.30 until the chime changes again. And with that in mind, by the way, uh, if you are in Puerto Vallarta, the clocks are ready to go forward this Sunday, April the 4th. Uh, that's a couple of days, of course. Be ready. Uh, and it looks like traffic lights are changing in Jalisco. The, the Rona is on the decline. So uh, from uh, Tribuna de la Bahia de Noticias, I have a article here which says Jalisco changes to a green traffic light in the middle of Holy Week. Dated March 26, uh, 2021, Jalisco Nayarit changed to green light, tr- green traffic lights, according to the information released today by Undersecretary of Health Hugo lopez Catel. Uh, this supposes a low level of contagion, ri- uh, of contagion risk in our entity, which will become an opportunity for the tourist destinations of Puerto Vallarta and Riviera Nayarit. At the moment, Puerto Vallarta operates with its own restrictions of the yellow traffic light, but it is to be expected that starting this Monday, the beginning of the Easter holiday period, these restrictions may be relaxed. Uh, There is still no reaction in this regard from the government of the state of Jalisco, neither from the governor of Nayarit. The local hotel industry had projected to face the vacations that are about to start with 66% of its capacity, which could be modified to benefit the tourism industry. In other words, up. (laughs) The sector authorities had projected that during this holiday period, some 50,000 people could arrive in Puerto Vallarta as visitors. Now with the green traffic light, this number could skyrocket. Tribuna de la Bahia and CPS Noticias will be on the lookout for possible new instructions from state authorities. And I have a link to that article from Tribuna de la Bahia. (laughs) Try to say that like five times really fast. Uh, They are in the show notes. You can find them there at www.portoveratotravelshow.com. And we go from green light to the brown light with this next story. (laughs) Sorry about that. Uh, In the middle of Easter holidays, health and civil protection authorities prohibited the recreational use of the most popular beaches in Puerto Vallarta, uh, Los Muertos and Olas Altas, by failing the quality of seawater, finding that there was way too much bacteria in the water and that it could put the health of bathers at risk. Lifeguards and personnel from the fire department and several protections of the city raised red flags on the beaches and have carried out a permanent operation to educate tourists and locals not to enter the sea. Dr. Vladimir Atilazo Barraza, director of the Sanitary Jurisdiction 8, declared that it is a multifactorial issue where the Commission for the Protection Against Sanitary Risks of the State of Jalisco has carried out the corresponding investigations and will take measures. They exceeded the limits. They will analyze the water again. Uh, This is the institution that is in charge of monitoring the 10 beaches of this tourist spot, Uh, Normally, it is done periodically, and when they go above 200, the measurement is not recommended for recreational activity, he stated. Uh, He recalled that in the measurement of March 5th, it was when the limit was exceeded, in which the investigation has always been implemented of a multifactorial nature, and therefore there will be samples this week, both by Sia Paul Puerto Vallarta and by Coprisal, uh, to test these beaches again and thus be able to give better measurements. Uh, the state official warned that the recommendation issued by Coprisal is not to use it for recreational purposes until we obtain the corresponding measurements that we are going to do again. Lifeguards make bathers aware of getting in and out of the water. He pointed out that these recommendations are made directly to the municipality who have to see the priority measures 
on those beaches, he announced that they would take new tests to have a favorable result probably next Wednesday. For his part, Adrian Bobabia, director of civil protection of the municipality, announced that they have already taken action on the matter, raising the red flag, explained that it warns of the danger so as not to enter the water due to fauna or waves, and in this case, for a health issue. This study was done at the beginning of March, and we are going to request um, our mayor is in that process to see the possibilities of doing another study to see if the conditions have already changed. We have to abide by the recommendations of the experts who pondered. And uh, he announced the measures, the red flag, which is what the use of the flag is for, and to be able to give the recommendations to our bathers. We have to be with the recommendations, emphasizing the conditions that the authorities tell us. And on that, we are going to see what decisions we make. Commander Bobadilla warned that the social and civil responsibility of visitors and locals is important in this matter. He reiterated that they are working on their investigation to give a better service and protection to the community. This weekend, while touring the designated beaches, the CPS Noticias cameras verified personnel from the Civil Protection Unit persuading bathers to get out of the sea, which was visibly cloudy with a brown foam. <laughs> they gathered by groups of people to inform them of the situation, and most chose to stay in the sand and no longer swim. And I have a link to that article, again, from Tribuna, Tribuna de la Bahia in the show notes, so... Poo. <laughs> hey, listen, you guys. I mean, I don't know about you, but I never, I never get in the water near the pier. Look, I know what you guys are doing. I watch. You drink. You eat. You lay on your back. You flip over on your stomach. And then uh, <clears throat> you mosey on down to the waves. You wade right on in. You pretend to cool off. And you just take a whiz. I know what you're doing. You're not fooling anybody. Seriously, I mean, <laughs> can you imagine if this town was actually full of tourists right now instead of like the Rona ghost town that it is? Man, anyway, uh, enough of that. The second batch of uh, the Happy Juice is not coming to Puerto Vallarta anytime soon. This is from Vallarta Independiente. There will be no vaccines for Vallarta, reports the SSJ. After the arrival of more than 100,000 vaccines against COVID-19, it was announced the Jalisco Health Secretariat announced that all of them will be destined for older adults in the city of Guadalajara, in addition to a few for medical personnel. With this announcement, it is confirmed that Puerto Vallarta will have to wait to place the booster vaccine, despite the fact that we are already in the period indicated by the pharmaceutical company Pfizer. As for the rest of the municipalities in the region, the second dose has not been applied either. This one from AstraZeneca, and it was not announced if there will be a next batch. <laughs> nice. And I have a link to that article in the show notes. Don't worry. There'll be lots of AstraZeneca coming your way. There's lots of countries that for some reason don't want it. So Mexico, <clears throat> look out. You might be getting leftovers. Uh, I've been getting some great emails lately, and this one, I don't know. Uh, is this a compliment? Let me read it to you. It says, thank you. Great show. This is from when? Uh, the subject is, uh, thank you. Great show. Dear Barry, my partner and I have traveled to PV three times and love it, but have waited to return until the pandemic eases. I downloaded your show from Audible three months ago. During this time, I had insomnia, lying awake from uh, 2 till 4. Nothing helped. Shot of tequila? No. Chewable pot? No. Then, a month ago, I set up your show on my iPhone. Uh, then, when I awoke at 2 in the morning, I'd listen to an episode. I would fall asleep in 10 minutes. Then I trained myself to complete the episode and then fall asleep, and it worked. So, now I have 12 different restaurants I plan to visit, trips up the coast to Sayulita, 
and so much more. Your website has all the links for your show notes. What a find. I'm sending the link for your show to my brother and his husband in Denver as they love PV. Spreading the love, win. <laughs> thank you, Win. I think it's my pleasure to help out, really. And uh, to those of you who are not insomniacs, I'm sorry if I put you to sleep, too. I, I read this note to my wife when uh, she laughed. She understands 100%, by the way. <laughs> all right, let's get to our guest, shall we? Uh, we all love to have fun, right? And when you are on vacation, that's what you want to be doing. You want to have a good time. And food, of course, is very important. We talk about food a lot. Uh, you want to have a variety to choose from. You want to have a good, strong drink. Well, many of us do. But uh, nobody, nobody wants to leave a restaurant hungry and unsatisfied, right? Well, I have never left this restaurant unsatisfied. I can tell you that. Uh, the restaurant is Pipi's. Uh, it is known as Pipi's, the original Mexican restaurant and bar in Puerto Vallarta. It's located in downtown uh, and uh, the thing I like about Peepees is uh, it's got a fun atmosphere. They've got live mariachi music. Um, the waiters and wait staff are eager. They're happy. They're great. They love to have a good time, and they love if you are having a good time, too. It's not a bad place to people watch, either, because when other people are having a good time, well, that's often kind of fun to watch, Right. Uh, anyway, it's always, it's usually hopping. I mean, this place is hopping with people who like to, you know, do just that, drink and eat and have a good time. Uh, it is located four blocks up from Malacan. It's on the corner of Papila and Calle Guadalupe Sanchez. Uh, it's just a minute's walk right down the street. Uh, actually, according to Google Maps, just 99 meters from Cafe de Artistas, if you want a landmark. Uh, now, I was staying just up the road from Peepees last time I was there and walked past it a bunch of times. And so I, you know, reached out and they said, sure, we'd love to talk. And I packed up my recording equipment in my old trusty day pack. And I wandered on down from the La, La Siesta Hotel, where I was staying, down to Calle Guadalupe Sanchez, 804, where, when I arrived, I was guided to a table. And there I set up for a conversation with a very lovely young lady who is a member of the Familia Pipis. Uh, her name is Paola Fregoso, uh, who will now tell you the story of her family and the legend of Pipis. The original Mexican restaurant in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Paula, thanks for coming on the show today. Hi, thank you for having me. Tell us a little about yourself. You're from Puerto Vallarta, right? Yes, I was born and raised in Puerto Vallarta, Jalisco, which is the most beautiful city in the entire world. And yeah, now I, I don't live here, but I come here every year to visit my family. Is that right? Okay, but yes. your family, you're coming to visit your family because your family's got this very popular, very cool restaurant. Um, tell us tell us about Peepees. Well, Peepees, um, which was the nickname of my uncle who first started the restaurant back in 1986. They, his name was Philip and his nickname was Peepee. And the restaurant is actually my dad's childhood home. This uh. is where he used to live with all his brothers and sisters. And um, basically, my uncle started with the, with the business, but it was very small. It was very different, the menu, everything. And when he passed away, my dad decided that he wanted to take over the restaurant because he was very passionate about the restaurant business, and he loved, like, to come up with new dishes and everything so that's when when he decided he he wanted to take over the restaurant yeah okay and this what year was that you remember that was in 1993 1993 1993 yeah. yeah all right so when your dad took over um what kind of changes did he make well first of all he bought 
the whole place from my grandma because uh, this used, used to be their house. Like all this part, the kitchen, the bathrooms, everything that was their home. Yeah. And basically, um, he built her, a new home for her, which is upstairs. She passed away already, but uh-huh. that was her house. That was her home. Uh-huh. And he just added a bunch of more tables. Like the menu completely transformed. Um, the, even the drinks, which which are very famous here in Pipis, which are the margaritas. Yeah, so we'll talk about your margaritas. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's our. That's our attraction. I would say the margaritas and our guacamole, which is made in front of you. We actually were one of the first places. I think we were the first place here in, in Mexico or Vallarta that would do the um, the guacamole in front of you. And that was such a big attraction. And also it was free, which is such a perk because everywhere you go, they will charge you guacamole because it's expensive. Yeah. yeah. And it's hard to get. But I feel like that's such a that's such a huge attraction here. And obviously our margaritas, which are huge. I was going to say they're as big as my head. Yeah, they're like a fish bowl. <laughs> yeah, it's it's huge. All right, how, how many uh, how many have you seen one person drink in, in in one seating? Oh my god! One time I saw this this guy. He drank three. Oh boy! And the thing is, like, he drank a regular margarita, which is not that bad. It only has like two shots of tequila. That's not too bad. <laughs> But then he ordered the strongest one, which is the Cadillac that has, oh my God, it, um, it has two shots of tequila and then it has one shot of Grand Manier. So he was wasted, wasted and he was falling asleep oh, on no. the table. Oh no. Yeah. Uh. And I remember I was working and I asked the waiter what's going on and he's like, oh, he like passed out. He drank three. <laughs> three margaritas and my dad walked in and he was so upset because he was like why would you give him three margaritas like why and he was like well he was like really demanding three margaritas he wanted a third one so yeah wanted you know the customer's always right yes (laughs) yeah so those are big so those are those those big margaritas have several shots of tequila in them yes yeah they have several shots okay all right um how many tables do you have here how many tables do you have in the Um, restaurant I would say in total we have like 50 or f- like 55 tables. So you can seat on a good night, you can seat probably 150 people here, 250 yeah. people. Yeah, especially because the way the, um, my dad really arranged the tables a certain way. So in case a big party comes, like you can easily arrange the tables to put, I don't know, like right here, you can easily fit 20 people. Like in on on one aisle, right? You know so what I mean? you can you can you can accommodate big parties. Yeah, we once had here upstairs like seventy people in this whole area. Yeah, it was a wedding, a small wedding, but yeah, it was like seventy or seventy-five people. Yeah, in Mexico, seventy-five is a small wedding. Everybody, just <laughs> in case you wanted to know. <laughs> oh my god, hey, <laughs> small wedding. <laughs> um, what is? Uh, tell us about your menu. Uh, what's on the menu? You serve lunch and you serve dinner. Yes. You open at what time? We open at 11 a.m. All right. And so when you, is, is your lunch menu similar to your dinner menu? Are they the same? Are they yeah, interchangeable? Yeah, we have the same menu throughout the day. Yeah. Okay. So what's what's on that menu? Well, our also like one of our most famous dishes is the fajitas. Mm-hmm. Actually, Pipis is recognized as the house of the sizzling fajitas. Uh-huh. They're delicious. Um, not just because I work here, but... <laughs> Because you know. Really, yeah, because I know what's good. Um, yeah, my favorite one is um, steak with shrimp. That's such a good combination. Uh, yeah. And it's served with rice and beans and pico de gallo and sour cream and, like, fresh tortillas, flour or corn, however you like it. And it's... I mean, I eat a lot. Some people, sometimes people like to share, but I would finish a fajita yeah. by myself. Wow! All right? Yeah. yeah. You don't know. You guys don't know how big the, the servings are here. They are they are huge. They're large. Yeah. So, yeah. all right. So fajitas. What else you got on that menu? Fajitas. We have enchiladas. Um, we have like seafood enchiladas, which are very popular. Also, um, we just included on the menu some shrimp tacos. Nice. Which um, they've been a success. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't have them on the menu yet, but we have a chalkboard 
like in the front uh-huh. and we like kind of like tell people about them and ev- so far everyone a lot of people have ordered them and they have loved it we have like tacos baja which has become very popular now nowadays mm-hmm. sure i mean they've always been but now i feel like this year more people requested we had tacos baja and then um I created these tacos um, with the chef that are called crispy shrimp tacos, and they're kind of like they're kind of spicy, like and sour. They're so good; you have oh, no idea. They're good. so crunchy, and then they have like a chipotle aioli on top. It's delicious. Yeah. Excellent! Wow, look at you, a menu yeah. a, a menu maker you are. Look at yeah, that. well, That's... not not necessarily, but oh. yeah, I tried. Well, all right, all right, we'll have to check that out. Um, what's what do you what would you would you say the fajitas is the favorite dish here? What would yes, you say? Yes, the fajitas definitely. Yeah. Fajitas, the margaritas, and I would also say like our our burritos. Have you seen the size of our burritos? I, yeah, I've had one of your burritos. Yes, I have. They're big. Yeah. They're this is big as the yeah, big plate. I mean, they're huge. they're huge. Yeah. yeah, and people love them. A lot of people like sometimes every. Um, we have customers that come and visit us every year, and they're like, "Oh my god, I have to, have to eat one of your burritos. Like it's a must." Yeah, I mean, but, you do you do like chimichangas too, right? Yes. I yes, mean, so we you, do. you're a little bit Tex-Mex, aren't you? Yeah, and on that side, we're a little bit more of Tex-Mex, but. Um, like people often, I mean, this is Vallarta is a very touristy place, sure. you know, and wherever you go, it doesn't matter if it's a local place, you will see tourists and people always think that, oh, my God, Peepees is such a like a gringo place. Sorry, like no, no, <laughs> no, no offense. But that's what they always think. And I'm like, well, it's because Vallarta is a. It's a touristy place. And also, like, us locals, like, we don't go eat during the week because we're working, you know? Yeah. So we usually go out to eat on the weekends. And I guess, like, people don't don't understand that. So when they walk around, like, during the week and they see a lot of tourists, they freak out and they're like, oh, my God, no, it's like a tourist trap. I'm not going there. <laughs> but I feel like they should... Give it, give it a chance, give it a go, and actually sit down and order something, and you'll realize that it's not touristy at all, and it's very homemade. The food is, it's like tastes like Mexico, you know? Yeah, tastes yeah, it tastes it so tastes good. It's delicious. Yeah. It's delicious. And um, well, right now we're sitting in, a, in in the restaurant, and there's and we're surrounded by Mexicans. So how's that? <laughs> you know? <laughs> so there you go. See, she's right. She's right. <laughs> What's it like running a restaurant that is this big? I mean, you have you have a lot of employees. You got a lot of chefs working back there. A lot of cooks, a lot of waiters. Um, is it tough? Definitely, running a restaurant, whether it's small or big, it's very difficult. It's definitely a challenge because. I feel like if you want your business to succeed, you have to always be there. A restaurant is very demanding. Like. Like I said, it doesn't matter if it's like a like a mini, a small restaurant. You, when I mean that I ha- that you always have to be there is that there has to be like a sense of you have to be able to control a lot of things that are happening. Yeah. And and I feel like that's one of the the keys to success. That's why PPS has been so successful because my family is always here and it's always checking like the kitchen is always checking on the, on the waiters, making sure that they're giving their best, that the food is like on point and that everything is fresh. My dad, when he first started his business, he would be here all day, all day. Oh, yeah. Seriously. Like he would make sure the waiters were on time when they had to, when they were opening the restaurant that the bartender had everything ready set up, like the mix, everything, everything, the preparation. He wakes up at 7 a.m. to go check on the on the chefs that are like cutting everything up, chopping everything. So yeah, like he he comes here often, and we have to be here also because he's very strict. <laughs> so we're here all the time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I found that restaurants, in order to succeed just about anywhere, but especially here in town, uh, they have to have a, a face that goes with the yes. place. You know, people come here because they want to they want to see the owner too. You know, they yes. just don't want to exactly. they don't want to just see the waiter. You know, and there's 
sort of a rhythm here. I don't know. Well, you said you've been here before. Sure. There's like this rhythm where my dad likes things to flow a certain way. And I feel like throughout the years, he's taught that so well to his employees that it's, it's so funny because I'm so used to the service here that when I go somewhere else, I get so disappointed that I don't get treated the same. And let's say you're eating and you dropped your your napkin or you dropped a fork or whatever. I kid you not, in like a second, it's like the waiter will put a new one, like a clean um, silverware or whatever, you know? Yeah. It's just, it's amazing. Like everything is so fast. Like that's just one of the beautiful things that my dad taught everybody. So even though like sometimes... My dad doesn't come often as he used to because we're here all the time. But my t my dad taught them so well that you don't even have to tell them anymore. Like, they just do it. They do it. It's automatic. It's just natural. Yeah. All right. We're listening to some music here. You have, I think, you have probably the best mariachis ever. You know, every time I come here, the group, is it always the same group? Yes. Is it, well, yeah? only, on, only one day because um, it's their day off. That's when they... They change, but there's two groups. One in the morning, one in, in the morning. They come here. At, they get here at 11, and they leave at three. And then another group comes at four, from four to closing. Wow! So you're you're not just paying you're not just paying uh, waiters and cooks and chefs and stuff. You're 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 paying mariachis too. Yeah. <laughs> well, the what's the name of the group? You know? I don't know. They don't have a group. Like they all have different nicknames, but I'm not sure what what the group what is. What the group is all because right. um, I know that um, outside here they have like their own independent, like their own groups of mariachis or uh -huh. bands. So um, here they just like get together, but I'm not sure. I'm yeah. pretty sure outside they have a, a name, but okay, yeah, they have, and, and they do gigs out there. Yeah, oh, that's really cool. All right, so let's. Let's take a quick break. Let's go out into Puerto Vallarta just for a minute. Let's okay. leave peepees just for a moment. Let's talk a little bit because you are a lunch and dinner place. Uh, we don't talk about that. Let's talk about your favorite breakfast spots. Do you have any that you'd like to share with us? Yes. Last year, I discovered this wonderful place called Miscelania Vallarta. It used to be right here around the corner. I know they have another one in Sayulita, uh -huh. but... I guess a, a lot of people don't like to drive to downtown anymore, so they moved to Versailles. But oh my god, it's so delicious! What do they What do they serve? Yeah, I mean, it's mostly like um, eggs or like molletes. Have you tried molletes oh, before? I love molletes. Molletes, um, chilaquiles, which I love, and they add like this poached egg on top, and like. The, I don't know, the sour cream is different, and also the cheese, instead of queso fresco, they add, like, I think it's goat cheese. I don't know, it's like a, I don't know, it's, it's really good, and it's not expensive at all, and they have really good coffee. I'm a really, I'm a coffee drinker, drinker so. So that's, that's yeah. very important to you. Yeah. What's the name of it again? Miscelania Vallarta. Miscelania Vallarta. Vallarta, yeah. Okay, that's, you have any others? Um, I recently went, discovered a new one. There's just so many That's new restaurants that they're opening. Just popping up still. Yeah. yeah. Um, there, it's called Cha. I recently went with my sisters and I ordered this dish called Croque Madame, which is like a very famous everywhere you like everywhere you what's, go. What's Croque Madame? It's like a, it's kind of like a sandwich, but it's bath in like this white sauce that has cheese and cream and then it has like an egg and it, the sandwich has an egg and it has like prosciutto but it's cooked oh my god it's so good i don't even know how to explain it but it's delicious yeah all right all right well there you go all right don't uh, don't miss that one i'll have i'll have links to those places by the way in the show notes as well of course as links to peepees um as well as pictures and i'll have a picture of paula's yeah. smiling face too so you can have that as well <laughs> let's see if i can get some of these guys in the in the band to to, to uh to pose for me a little later um all right so that's breakfast we're not going to talk about lunch or dinner but if you were going to go out for like a a nice a nice steak dinner where would you go for a nice steak dinner I would go to Sonora Prime Grill. It's in La Marina. Okay. I think 
I think their their steak is really good there. Okay, so uh, very good. Sonora Prime. Sonora Prime, yeah. Sonora Prime. If uh, if you had a day off uh, and you had to come back, and you can't just you know sleep over, but you're going to come back that same day, where would you go? I would definitely go to. Um, it's okay. I would go to <laughs> Playas Gemelas. Playas Gemelas. Playas okay, Gemelas. so where? Tell us where that is. It's in Mismaloya. It's one of the, like the most beautiful spots in in Vallarta. I feel like. Yeah. Yeah, cool. I've been. I was when I lived here. I would go every weekend with my family or friends. It's so peaceful there. Do they have like vendors there, or do they sell they food do. there? Or um, or they have like some vendors, like I don't know, selling those like shrimps you know oh the yeah ones shrimp on the stick like yeah the, yeah yeah um what else do they sell sometimes like you can see people like selling micheladas you know yeah, you try micheladas and yeah they tell add, everybody what a michelada is okay so a michelada okay here in mexico a michelada is a beer any beer of your choice and then they add lime and salt okay okay and then people th- people back in the U.S. think that a michelada is what we call cielo rojo. Uh-huh. A cielo rojo is the beer with like those like salsa, like maggi sauce. And um, it has a little bit of tapatio and then a little bit of tajin and lime and salt. And then they add the clamato, which is like the tomato. What do they call it? Yeah, uh, tomato the, clam juice. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. That one. And that's and that is a it's, cielo rojo. Yeah, that's a cielo rojo. Okay, so remember, you know, you, if you're gonna go and sit down, and you order, because I've seen somebody do this just <laughs> recently. They sat down, they ordered a uh, michelada, and it it wasn't it wasn't orange or wasn't uh, <laughs> wasn't red, you know. Yeah. So you gotta you gotta say that you cielo know cielo rojo. rojo. Yeah, cielo rojo. So red sky. Yep. Okay. Um, how about? If you were going to go away for like three days, where would you go? I would go to Majahuitas. Majahuitas. Paradise. Right, tell, tell everybody about Majahuitas. Well, Majahuitas is a beach kind of hidden. I mean, now a lot of people know about it, but it's usually not crowded, and which is great. And the water is oof, like green. Not green as in dirty, like green as in... <laughs> Emerald color. Uh, yeah. yeah. And also kind of like turquoise. And, you know, the other day, um, there were some whales over there. So I, I, when I go there, I go swimming. And they were so close. Oh, wow. Did that freak you out? Or were you just no, like so I, excited? I, I, just, I was just like, that freaked me out a little bit because I was like, what? I go swim. I've, I've gone swimming there many times. And you're telling me that there's whales close? <laughs> but, yeah, it's just... Um, it's it's a very peaceful place. Definitely, if you want to go and relax and just forget about the world and just connect with yourself, it's a beautiful place to go. Majahuitas. Majahuitas. That actually is on the hike on the way to uh, Las Animas. Right. So if you've taken that hike, you've walked right past Majahuitas. And if you haven't stopped there to get a drink either, so you never know. Yeah. You know, that's a great place to stop. And, and you're almost always... I mean, every time I've taken that hike, I, I have always seen a beautiful woman there. So I can understand why you go there, Paula. <laughs> um, How long is the hike? Where do you start it? Uh, you start at Boca. Boca Tomatlan. Sí. See? And then you just, yeah, walk over. You pass uh, Colomitos. And then <gasps> just before you get to Animas, it's right there. And how long was the hike? It took, uh, well, it, t- it took me two hours. Wow. Yeah, it's a two-hour hike, but I, some people take, uh, maybe it was an hour and a half. Mine was an hour and a half. Some people take two, two and a half hours. I was okay. really on a, I was on a mission. I was walking fast. Wow. Yeah. So it's a, it's a fun hike. I have to, I have to go on that yeah, hike. Yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, especially since you go drop down into Colomitos, and then the, uh, the Ocean Grill is right there, mm-hmm. and, uh, right off of Colomitos. So it's very, very, very unique, very pretty there. So yeah, you no, got to do it, Paula. Beautiful, yeah, yeah, I have to. Um, and there's places, and there are places that, to to stay over at Mahawitas, and so yeah, three days in Mahawitas. Talk about you know, <laughs> just unwind and do nothing. That's that's yeah, it right just there. Just like lay on the on the beach, yeah. Have some drinks. Yeah. Have a good time. 
Yeah, have a good time. Disconnect. Um, if you had a word of advice for a first-time visitor to Puerto Vallarta, what would it be? Besides coming to PPs, because they got to do that. Uh, yeah. Um, be careful with taxi drivers. Yeah. All right. Tell me. Uh, tell me what they should be looking out for. Because if they see that you're a tourist, they will charge you a lot of money. So make sure that you ask before you get in the taxi. How much would you charge me to go? to, I don't know, my hotel, blah, 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 or somewhere. Just make sure you ask them before because some people just like, it's hard. Um, they don't want to struggle with like getting a taxi. So they just like see one and they're like, okay, let me, let me get that taxi. And they hop in and they charge them. The other day we had this taxi that wanted to charge them like $200 more. <laughs> and my sister was like, no, 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 that's insane. That's not how much it is to go to that place. Like, no. Yeah. And they got very upset, but it's just like, it's the truth. Like, don't, don't do that. Right. It's not right. right. No, it's not. But, you know, it's almost like if you're going to do that, you know, it's like going over to the guys over in the shark tank at the airport and saying, and, and, and pulling someone away from them. They don't want that, right? Mm, oh, <laughs> no, yeah. no, don't do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's my catch. My yeah. catch for the day. Exactly. So, yeah. Um, and you all know, all you listeners know, if you're going to get in a taxi, you do just what Paula said. Where, how much, cuanto cuesta ir a yeah. wherever you're going, right? And they exactly. will answer you. Most of them speak English. Yeah, a lot of them, yeah. Yeah, they do. Some of them pretend they don't, but most of them speak just a little bit. Enough, <laughs> yeah. right? They've been, they've been taking yeah, people they all around understand. town for years. Yeah, yeah they get it. Um, what kind of, maybe a word of warning. What kind of a warning would you give someone coming to Puerto Vallarta? If you drink too much, if you're wasted, don't go for a swim. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. We've, we've had a lot of cases where people get just wasted and um, they're like, oh, yeah, I want to go for a swim. And mm -mm, adios. They, adios, yeah. 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 Some of them have drowned like on the beach here. It's, it's really scary. So be careful. <laughs> yeah. Watch what you're drinking yeah. and don't get ideas yeah. that you're going to be Mark Spitz and exactly. go swim across the ocean. It's not yep. good. Let's just say that money was no object and you just wanted to spoil yourself and do something, just do something crazy or something fun here on the bay. What would you do? I would go skydiving. Whoa. Would yeah. you really? They have skydiving here. Yes, they yeah. do. It's by the airport. And you can see, obviously, everything. And a lot of my friends have done it, and they said it was a magical experience, and I would love to do that. But I'm just a chicken. But Yeah. <laughs> hey, they do tandem. You know, uh, the first jump, you're jumping with somebody hanging know, on to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> um, well, that sounds like a lot of fun, though. Yes. Let's come back to pee let's, let's, um Let's tell people how they find you. Are you... Um, are you on? You're obviously you're on the web. You're We're got a Facebook media, page. Yeah. You got all that stuff. What yes, we have a Facebook page which is called Peepees the Original, and we also have an Instagram. It's called Peepees PV. Um, and well, you can find us on TripAdvisor, on Yelp, everything, and. Don't trust everything you read. I swear. <laughs> they call it trick advisor, not trip advisor. Oh my god, yes. Trick advisor. <laughs> That's right. That's true. I feel like Yelp is more reliable though than than trip advisor nowadays. Yeah. Well they've they've got their problems too. They've got their problems too. Um all right. Well, I will have links. I'll have links to the Facebook page. I'll have. Uh, I won't have links to the Yelp or, or to the uh, or to the Trip, Trick Advisor page, but I will have uh, that, and I will have obviously a Google Map that will take you right to the front door of Peepees, so you won't get lost because it's kind of up in the neighborhood a little bit, right? Yeah. I mean, it's not just on the main drag, and when you get into this area, it's kind of. It's kind of mazy, right? People don't, yeah, they people don't get know. Lost. They get lost. And they're going, where is this restaurant? So you really need, you need me to get you to the front door. So I'll have that uh, right in the show notes. Uh, as well as, like I say, pictures. I'll even uh, have a, a link that'll take you right to the menu. So you can just see, uh, you know, what you're going to order before you even get here and sit down. Yes. <laughs> uh, Paula, is there anything else you wanted to add before we say goodbye today? Um, just... Visit Puerto Vallarta. It's, it's, uh, it's paradise. You will not regret it. And don't forget to visit PPs. And remember, don't drink the water. Drink the margaritas.
All right. Thank you, Paula. Uh, drink the margaritas, really, for sure. <laughs> Have you seen what the water does to the streets? You, you Don't drink the water. That's what one of my college Spanish professors used to actually say, so it was funny back then. It's funny now, right? <laughs> anyway, thank you, Paula. Uh, thanks for ta- talking to us and telling us all about peepees. And listen, if you have not ever been to peepees, you you got to go. And if you have been, well, don't forget you got to go back. You know, it's one of these one of these places that uh, that you got to come back and enjoy uh, over and over again. Uh, have one of those huge margaritas, and uh, man, uh, for me, I just love their burritos. Talk about huge. Anyway, I've got pictures. I've got maps. I have links that will take you to the front door of PPs, and you'll find them in the show notes of, over at www.Puerto Vallarta Traveler, uh, Travel Show, Puerto Vallarta Travel Show dot com. Uh, and as listeners to the show know, I I have a I have a really soft spot for charity work and uh, works of giving and loving the people of Puerto Vallarta. And one of the reasons that I I chose to introduce you to PPs is because they are very generous in, in a quiet way. Uh, and, uh, and they give back to the community in so many, many ways. And of course I have a, a very soft spot in my heart for individuals and businesses who do give back to the community. What can I say? It's just something that was instilled in me at a very young age by my parents. Uh, so, so I totally get it. And so thank you. Thanks to the wonderful family over at Pipi's in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. And, uh, well, that should do it for this week. Next week, stay tuned for more on-the-ground reports from Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, with travel tips, great restaurant excursion ideas, and more. But until then, remember that this is an interactive show where I depend on your, your questions and your suggestions about all things Puerto Vallarta. If you think of something that I should be talking about, well, please reach out to me by clicking on the Contact Us tab and sending us your message. And remember, if you're considering booking any type of tour while you're in Puerto Vallarta, you must go to vallartainfo.com, that's JR's website, and reserve your tour through him right from his website. Remember, this is a value-for-value value proposition. His experience and on-the-ground knowledge of everything in Puerto Vallarta in exchange for your making a purchase of a tour that you would do anyway. You're just doing it through him as a way of saying thank you. Thanks, JR, for being our guide cost no more than if you were going to use someone else so do it really and when you do take one of these tours email me about your experiences maybe you can come on board and share with others what you liked or didn't like about the tour again contact me by clicking on the contact us tab and sending off a message and don't forget his maps his diy tours his revitalized happy hour board and more and i have links to all of those in the show notes and uh, once again if you like this podcast Please take some time and subscribe and give me a good review wherever you happen to be listening to this show. That way we can get the word out to more and more people about the magic of this place, Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Remember, I made it easy for you to do just that with each episode I create. But if you haven't been to my website, you really need to go there. I have I have links to the places that we talk about, interesting pictures, and more, all right there in my blog posts and in the show notes for each episode of the show. So check them out for sure if you haven't already. All right? All right. Uh, thank you so much, Paola Fragoso from PP's Restaurant in Puerto Vallarta. The original, the best, the margaritas, the music. I really love this place. Get over there for lunch or dinner the next time that you're craving big food big drinks and some great music and a great time and you will you will have a great time there and thanks to all of you for listening all the way through this episode of the Lord Clark Travel Show this is Barry Kessler signing off with a wish for you to slow down be kind and live the Vallarta lifestyle nos vemos amigos
Vallarta Samba de Puerto Vallarta Noche de Arrugio del Mar Samba de Puerto Vallarta 